Hey, it's Eric Second. In this video, I'll cover the leaked 7.3 patch notes and how to fix the tier list. From now on, I'll also be adding the top 6 bands for each patch. Starting with Camille, Camille, we currently have an S tier. She's extremely band worthy and has an extremely overloaded kit. So let's see what they try to do to bring her down a bit. They nerfed her Q by 20%. This affects her damage output over time, her scaling output. They nerfed the slow by 10%. That doesn't matter too much. The E is nerfed by 20. The E mana cost. Probably still too small. And then the stun duration goes down by 0.25, which is really nice. And then she's no longer granted that attack speed um, for free when if she misses the champion. The only thing is if you're able to if you dodge the skill shot, then she's no longer granted attack speed, but then this nerf doesn't really apply to her anymore. And if you get hit by it, then she still is granted the attack speed, but you're stunned for 0.25 seconds longer or shorter. So it's not too big of a nerf. And then for ultimate, they changed her ult fades away now after one second if you're able to kill her. So overall, not too bad, but it's still not enough to bring her out of S tier. And I have a feeling that's how most of the picks are going to go for this patch. A lot of the picks almost belong in tier of their own. They're so they're so strong in their current states, but we'll keep we'll keep reading. For Ivern, Ivern is extremely unique champion. We currently have the champion at A tier, even though it's definitely could definitely argue argue for putting the champion S tier last patch. But you don't see the champion that often, and the champion has an extremely unique kit. One thing we do know is that Daisy is extremely powerful. Uh, it used to regenerate 3% maximum health per second out of combat, which was definitely a ton. Basically, it only felt like you could kill Daisy at level 6. Like, if you were able to smite Daisy, that was great. And then they also nerfed the resist by 30 and max at level 16. So I think that will definitely matter, and it will be a lot harder for Ivern to, to start Dragons and Siege. So I think it is a decent nerf. And since we didn't have Ivern at S tier, Ivern's going to remain... Uh, S tier. So for Jace, now we're coming to some of the AD champions, Jace and Kha'Zix. The one thing that I don't think they accounted for this patch is the Lethality items, and especially, specifically Edge of Night. So anything that they do probably won't be enough. So Jace is definitely S tier. You can actually, I think he's pretty much S tier mid too, but he's most frequently played top. And then, so they nerfed his Q by 30 damage, but only the melee form. Man is up by 55. This is pretty much these two are the nerfs that they they're basically reverting buffs that they made a while ago. So basically, yeah, I don't think <laughs> these are really small nerfs, and with the buffs to the items and how strong he already was, he's definitely going to remain in the exact same spot. Kha'Zix is another one. He <laughs> definitely benefits from all the items, him more than most other champions, and the Kha'Zix was ex already extremely broken. Made him at number two for bands, and then so the nerfing is keep by point two. And then 15% on isolated targets is no longer refunded. And yeah, the U cooldown is already not that long. And with the change of items, he's already he's going to be one of the best champions. And then we'll update the bands after we've gone through everything. LeBlanc is pretty much the queen of mid right now. She has an extremely safe kit. She's great, has great interactions with junglers and joining fights. And then she's also a super safe pick and has great damage output just by herself. So nerfing her passive, 10 level 1, and then 35 level 6 is actually a big deal. And then it starts to then it starts to drop off a little bit again. And it's the same late game. This really shouldn't change anything. She's still gonna be too safe of a pick, interact too well with their jungler, interact just have so much map pressure that I think LeBlanc is also going to be at the same spot. And LeBlanc was also we also had her S tier. So Mazar showed up, this champion joined the support meta pretty quickly and then pretty much just dominated that meta. His poke and the safety at which he can poke and then also the pick potential he has was pretty absurd. So they're nerfing uh, the Voidling spawn time. Now they spawn 0.35 seconds later after, after activating W and then the cooldown between casts to get that swarm going is one second. And now they'll also move more slowly, so it'll be harder to poke. It'll be more risky for Malzar to get the damage off. And I think this nerf actually might be the first one that really brings the champion down. Where do we have him? Yeah, so Malzar, you can really play him just about anywhere. But support's his best, but 
He's good top jungle mid and then support. So this might actually I might have to bring all the other ones down. But this might we'll move him to A for now. And then that would also mean I have to change all these for B to B. Alright, so not bad. And right, now we have Rengar. Rengar was their number one ban. Let's see what they did. But he's also going to win to benefit from the Lethality items, and specifically Edge of Night. So they nerfed his dash distance by 50. Any mobility nerf is always a huge deal. So this is a good nerf. Um, they removed the the crowd control, which made him extremely safe. And exp yeah, made it extremely safe for Rengar to jump in. So this is another great nerf. These two together are really good. And then the ult one doesn't matter at level 6, but then... Yeah, six seconds lower and twenty or ten down, a level sixteen. So overall, these are pretty good nerfs. It doesn't matter early, and I still, but he'll still have great damage output, and the items are going to be so good. I still think he's going to be S tier, even though these are actually really good nerfs, and they're in the right direction, especially this W one. Immunity is pretty strong ability to have. Just on a. She doesn't really benefit from the cloudy items, and a lot of the ADCs have actually become pretty dominant. So this shouldn't change anything for her position, and I think we had her... She's not bad, but yeah, not going to knock her into that S tier. What do we have Vi at? Vi we had at S tier. She's actually performing extremely well in solo queue. It was a little bit less of a competitive pick, but I still threw it in here. still considered her an S tier pick. They nerfed her movement speed by 5, and then they nerfed her attack speed by 0.625. Attack speeds are really important. Both of these are actually really important. Because that's, uh. Yeah, just nerfing base stat to be really careful with. So, we'll nerf the Triforce build a little bit. Maybe we'll go back to building Warrior Black Cleaver. But then, Triforce is still such an efficient item on there. But these are pretty pretty big. It's going to nerf the, the abil her ability to grab Dragon early on to the game. She'll still probably do it. It's still going to be her playstyle, but. It might actually, and then with how strong some of the other junglers are, I think it's time to bring Vi down to A tier. So we have another champion making some movement. Oh, this is interesting. So we have Vladimir, and this is the first champion who's actually really receiving any buffs this patch. His auto attack range is going up by 3. The attack missile speed is going up by 200, which is nice. It never felt that good to auto attack on Vlad. You'd pretty much always go for the Q if you could. And then buffing the AP on Q by 0.5. This is a lot of extra damage. 25 on a spammable ability that's point and click is really nice. This is what it, when they nerfed Kassen or gave Kassen 20 damage on his Q, it really brought him back onto the meta. And then, but they nerfed the the bonus damage, so it's going to hurt his scaling, but his landing phase is going to be a lot better. This is really interesting nerf or interesting buff, excuse me. Um, where do we have him? Currently, I have him at A, and then. I'm just not sure if he's still going to be able to compete with the Ryze and Corky in the current meta. So I think we're going to keep him at A, but I'm going to be watching out for this champion. And Zyra is considered the best support, even though some of the the traditional supports like Lulu and Karma are doing really well. Um, and then Mauser got nerfed. So let's see what they did to Zyra. Because with the Mauser nerf and him being brought down, Zyra would definitely be the best AP if this nerf isn't too bad. Best, uh, best like carry support. Nerfed the mana by 10, and then they did plant stuff. We'll have to see how big of a difference this makes, but overall it doesn't look too bad. I think she's definitely going to remain an S tier and a top end support if that's what you're looking for for the comp, if you're looking for some extra damage from bot lane and for that laning pressure. All right, I think that covers all of those champions. And yeah, so there's no item changes, so the Thaddy is here to stay for this patch. Edge of Night still going to have that 30 second cooldown. But let's go back and see how it affects the bands. So already there's one grave set or one band that we're going to move up. So all these champions did get nerfs. And I think that actually puts Graves at number one now. So we'll move Graves up. And then Rengar received one of the bigger nerfs out of all these champions. So where does that put him? Kha'Zix is actually going to be number two. He stays there. His nerf was really small and then he benefits some, uh, the most from the Lethality changes out of the junglers and the champions on this list. 
Blanc nerf was small, smaller than the Camille nerf. She'll remain above there. Chase. And then... Hmm. Yeah, but the Fatty items are going to be so good. So champion like LeBlanc isn't going to do as well. I think we just have to... We put Rengar back. Yeah, Rengar remains at level 3, and the big bands really don't change up that much. Just because these champions were already so dominant, and then Jace, Rengar, Kha'Zix, Graves all really benefit from the Lothadian item changes. And so if you, Kha'Zix is able to build 4 Meyer items, if he builds Merc Treads, Edge of Night, Ma, and GA against LeBlanc, it's going to be really hard for her to be able to outcarry something like Kha'Zix. And then same thing with Rengar and Graves, they can do the same thing. And then Jace as well, but then Jace has more competition in the top lane. LeBlanc is still a great pick to have in the mid lane. The only thing is if we had put Jace above. Oh, I have to change this ordering though. Yeah, Jace and Camille. Jace might be above Camille, just with he can benefit more from the items. We'll see, I might switch these two, and then I'll always keep watching the patch and see how things unfold. And then we'll keep updating the list as the patch continues on. And then let's see. The last thing there is, there should be skins coming. And this is what we're really looking for. This is the best part, <laughs> the best part of the new patch. It's going to be get, uh, getting a hold of these Blood Moon skins. Yeah, so I hope this was helpful. Um, thank you so much for watching.